Hi, my name is Pamela Coons, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Oncology at Yale School of Medicine and Yale Cancer Center. I'm excited to announce ASCO's new open access journal, JCO Oncology Advances. As the inaugural editor-in-chief, I hope to support JCO Oncology Advances to become the premier platform to bridge the gap between accessible scientific research and clinical care. Stay tuned for more information, including new article types, at ascopubs.org forward slash JCO Oncology Advances. We look forward to seeing your submissions in spring of 2024. This JCO podcast provides observations and commentary on the JCO article, Communicating and Understanding the Purpose of Pediatric Phase 1 Cancer Trials, by Melissa Cusino and colleagues. My name is Jennifer Mack, and I'm an assistant professor at Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. My oncologic specialty is pediatric oncology. Cusino and colleagues report on communication about Phase 1 trials in pediatric oncology in their article, Communicating and Understanding the Purpose of Pediatric Phase 1 Cancer Trials. The authors observed and audio taped informed consent conferences for 85 patients at six pediatric Phase 1 centers, and then interviewed 60 of their parents in order to understand what physicians told parents about Phase 1 trials and what parents took away from that conversation. Others have evaluated the extent to which parents understand that the purpose of a phase one trial is to benefit future children. Here, the authors focused on understanding of some of the major tenets of phase one trials, including drug safety, dose finding, and dose escalation. The authors found that physicians explained dose finding and dose escalation in about half of conferences. Drug safety was addressed in fewer than one quarter of conferences. Study-specific issues, such as the goal of the proposed study or mechanisms of involved drugs, were explained in 85% of conferences, a finding that suggests that these issues form the basis of most informed consent discussions. Given relatively limited communication about the general scientific tenets of Phase I trials, it is not surprising that parents themselves had limited understanding of drug safety, dose finding, and dose escalation. About half of parents understood that dose finding was a goal of the study. Only 12% understood the concept of dose escalation. About one-third had what the authors considered to be substantial understanding of all three issues. And one-third of parents were defined as having essentially no understanding of any of the three scientific concepts of phase one trials. Also not surprising was the finding that parents were more likely to understand these issues when the physician explained issues such as dose cohorts and the goal of the scientific phase one trial in the conference. However, many parents did not understand everything about scientific purpose that the physician expressed, and many other parents understood more than what the physician had communicated likely from reviewing the consent document or using other sources of information beyond the conversation itself. Minority parents and those with lower socioeconomic status were less likely to understand the purpose of phase one trials. Ultimately, 95% of parents observed enrolled their children in phase one cancer trials. What should clinicians take away from this study? To begin with, this study reminds us that we don't say everything that's important for parents to hear, and that even when we do, parents don't hear or understand everything we say. Importantly, there are ways we can deal with this. First, despite the many difficult and complex issues that arise when a child becomes eligible for a phase one trial, we can provide clear information about a core set of issues. I would argue that parents really must hear that the child's disease is incurable with or without a phase one trial. In that context, we can convey that the offered study is intended to benefit future children, not the child in the room, no matter how much we would like it to be otherwise. Conveying this information is especially important in the age of targeted therapy, 
where both researchers and parents can have heightened expectations. Instead, this study is focused on three issues, making sure that the medication is safe, finding the highest possible dose that doesn't cause too many difficult side effects, and working up on the dose from a low one without many expected side effects to a high one that maximizes what the child can tolerate. Finally, we can remind parents that although the prospect of benefit from this drug is very low and cure is not expected, the study can be a way to try to move the field forward for children in this difficult situation in the future. The second thing we can do is ask parents what they understand. If the researchers can do this, and simply by asking can discover that two-thirds of parents have missed the major concepts, so can we as clinicians. It gives us a chance to try again and to correct any misconceptions. Third, we need to remember that some parents are at risk for coming away with lesser understanding, especially minorities and the poor. This group of authors is not the first to demonstrate disparities. Previous work shows that it is both difficult to put minority patients on clinical trials and difficult to be sure that such patients understand the concepts. Unfortunately, we still have few concrete solutions, but awareness is at least a start. And fourth, we can begin all of these conversations by asking parents and children what is most important to them as they look ahead. Only once we know their goals can we fully discuss the options ahead and the extent to which we think these options may help to meet those goals. For parents who want to focus on quality of life, a special trip or time with friends and family, a phase one trial may not be the right thing for us to recommend. But if we don't ask about goals and just start the conversation by focusing on cancer-directed therapy, we may never know that. Why does all of this matter? The authors state it most clearly in their acknowledgments, where they dedicate the paper to the memory of the children who participated in this study. These parents were not just deciding about participating in a phase one clinical trial. They were deciding one aspect of how their children would spend their last phase of life. Almost all of the parents in the study ultimately decided to participate in a phase one trial, but two-thirds did so without being able to provide true informed consent. We do not know if, in the broader sense, these parents and children received the kind of end-of-life care they would ideally wish for had they been fully informed. Phase one trials are a critical aspect of cancer drug development, and the children being treated today have benefited from those who participated in these and other clinical trials of the past. But parents and children old enough to participate in these conversations really must be informed about the difficult situation they are in and the trade-offs they're making as they make decisions about care of their advanced cancer. This concludes the JCO podcast. Thank you for listening. For more original research, editorials, and review articles, please visit us online at jco.org. This production is copyrighted to the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Thank you for listening.